diseases of the heart that you must stay away from. Success in the hereafter depends upon the purification of our hearts in this life. In a hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah, the Messenger of Allah says, Verily Allah does not look to your faces and your wealth, but he looks to your heart and to your deeds. The diseases of the heart are more dangerous than those of the body. This is because diseases of the heart affect a person's religion and can destroy the person's life in the hereafter. The problem with the diseases of the heart is that they cannot be easily seen by the senses as they are hidden and hard to recognize and therefore most people pay little attention to diagnose and cure them. In this video, we'll look at five major diseases of the heart and offer some suggestions about the cures so that you can stay away from them. Number one, love of this world and dislike of death. The root cause of love of this world is greed and forgetting death. When we look at the priorities in the lives of many Muslims, there is a strong desire to accumulate excessive wealth. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah at takathur the piling up of worldly things diverts you until you come to the graves. This means that the time that we spend in piling up material goods or accumulating more and more keeps us busy and distracts us from what we really should be doing. Love of this world includes things like extreme desire for money, power, position and fame and they make the heart sick. It's reported that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, two hungry wolves sent in the midst of a flock of sheep are not as destructive and harmful as the love of the money and extravagance are for the religion of a person. So what is the cure for the love of the world and dislike of death? Number one, remembering death. Regularly contemplate the reality of death and the brief nature of life. Number two, simplicity and lifestyle. Strive for a simple and modest lifestyle. Number three, avoiding comparison with others. Remember that the true success is in the hereafter, not in keeping up with what others have. Number two, envy, hasad. Envy is a disease of the heart in which the envier wishes to see the blessings removed from the envied. For example, hoping that someone loses their job or their wealth or their social status. Envy is one of the most corrosive of all human emotions. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Abstain from envy. Indeed, envy finishes all the good acts and their rewards as the fire does away with the firewood. Shaitan wants us to become ungrateful to Allah. The way shaitan accomplishes this is by making our own self, the nafs, rebel against us by being unhappy about our present condition, by looking at the blessings given to other people by Allah. This creates a feeling of envy in a person. So how can we cure envy? Number one, seek refuge in Allah by saying, A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajim. Whenever you feel envy creeping into your heart, seek refuge in Allah from the evil influence of shaitan. Number two, gratitude. One of the most effective ways to combat envy is to cultivate gratitude. Regularly remind yourself of the countless favors and blessings that you have received from Allah and be thankful for them. Number three, arrogance, kibr. Arrogance is one of the deadliest diseases of the heart. Arrogance comes from a sense of superiority, self-importance and an inflated ego. Often the arrogant person wants to exhibit their pride by humiliating others. In the Quran, in Surah Luqman, Luqman advises his son, and do not turn your face away from men with arrogance, nor walk in insolence through the earth. Verily, Allah does not like each arrogant boaster. Also in the Hadith, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, one will not enter paradise if one has an atom's weight of arrogance in his or her heart. Arrogance and envy go together a lot of times. The reason of expulsion of shaitan from paradise was his arrogance and envy towards the prophet Adam. It is mentioned in the Quran that Allah says to Satan, what prevented you from bowing yourself when I commanded you? Iblis, shaitan says, I am better than him. You have created me of fire while you have created him of clay. Arrogant people take it for granted that the qualities they possess, such as intelligence, power and wealth, will stay with them forever. They do not realize that Allah is the one who granted them this talent or wealth in the first place. So how do we cure arrogance? The best treatment of the disease of arrogance is the frequent remembrance of death and to reflect on our origin. Allah brought us into being from nothingness and there are many things outside our control. When we reflect on our insignificance in the universe, this will help to remove the feeling of arrogance.
Number four, anger. Anger, if not properly controlled, can become a very destructive quality. Uncontrolled anger can lead to disputes, conflicts, and broken relationships. Anger can lead to a loss of self-control, and when a person acts in anger, they may say or do things that they later regret. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Give me advice. The Prophet ﷺ said, Do not get angry. The man asked repeatedly, and the Prophet answered each time, Do not get angry. So how do we cure anger? Number one, say, I seek refuge with Allah from the shaitan. Salman bin Sard narrated, While I was sitting in the company of the Prophet ﷺ, two men abused each other, and the face of one of them became red with anger. On that the Prophet ﷺ said, I know a word which if he were to say it, what he feels would go away. If he said, I seek refuge with Allah from the shaitan, what he feels, i.e. his anger, would go away. The second thing that the Prophet ﷺ advised us is that when we get angry, we should change our position. So if we are standing, we should sit down. Or if we are sitting, we should lie down. Number five, backbiting, riba. Backbiting means that we talk about someone in his or her absence in a way that would upset them if they heard us, even if what is being said is the truth. Allah says in the Quran, and spy not, nor backbite one another, would one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would hate it. In this verse, Allah has made the analogy of backbiting to eating the flesh of one's dead brother. Just like the dead person is absent and cannot defend themselves, the person against whom backbiting is done is also absent and cannot defend themselves. The best way to avoid backbiting is that if you have a complaint against someone, to go and talk to that person directly instead of talking to other people about it. And remember that if the heart is spiritually healthy, the person will be strong in overcoming temptations and the whisperings of shaitan will only have a weak effect. On the other hand, if the heart is spiritually weak, the whisperings of shaitan will be strong and effective. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to watch part two to learn about the five other diseases of the heart.